Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we want to talk about a new processor from Intel, not targeted towards the high-end enthusiast and more targeted for mobile users, people that are interested in laptops like this. The Core M5Y70 is a processor. It's Intel's first processor built on the 14 nanometer process. It is also uh, the first using the Broadwell microarchitecture, in particular the Broadwell Y implementation of it. If you remember back uh, back in August on PCPro.com, we posted a story that looked at the 14 nanometer process, the improvements they made, uh, the microarchitecture improvements, and kind of what the goals of that particular uh, iteration of Broadwell were. And then about a month later at IDF, Intel gave us the opportunity to actually test with a reference unit uh, based on Broadwell. Well, I think it was called Llama Mountain, uh, and look at early performance numbers. Now, the problem with that was that we were in a you know, a room for an hour, you said, here you go, run some performance tests, you know, they were controlling all of that. We didn't really get a chance to evaluate the performance in the way uh, that we really want to in-house uh, with, you know, us taking care of all of the uh, ins and outs and what tests we run. Um, that all changed this past week when Lenovo shipped the Yoga 3 Pro to us. So this is a, an Ultrabook. And obviously the important part here is that it uses the Core M5Y70 processor in it. It has other uh, interesting things, new uh, hinge design, but we'll talk about that when we do a review of the laptop itself. Today I just want to talk about the processor. Um, now the primary competition for this Core M5Y70 is the processor that's in the Yoga 2 Pro, uh, which in this case is the Core i5-4200U. Uh, that's a Haswell part, I think it's Haswell ULT is the designation there. Um, but these are very competitive uh, systems based on pricing, uh, but they have some unique traits thanks to the implementation of the Core M5Y70. So the 5Y70 is broad well Y. Uh, it has a 1.1 gigahertz base clock, relatively low. It has a 2.6 gigahertz boost clock, relatively high. Uh, it's a dual core four thread processor. Uh, it has Intel HD 5300 graphics in it, uh, which we'll talk about as well. And of course it is that 14 nanometer design. So um, what's interesting is from a pure specification standpoint, the, the Core M5Y70 doesn't really stand out in any particular way. It has a relatively low base clock and it has a relatively high boost clock. And that's one of the things they targeted with Broadwell was the ability to spike very high for short, short bursts of time in order to improve kind of the usability performance of a machine rather than say just benchmark performance. Um, what's interesting about the Core M5Y70 and the whole Broadwell Y series when, when several other parts come out is that it kind of straddles a line between being close to the performance of the Core i5-4200U Haswell part and uh, being significantly faster than, say, uh, uh, Bay Trail for other tablets and machines. It's kind of interesting. Now, in terms of CPU-specific performance, there's some interesting traits with the processor. For example, single-threaded performance, something like Cinebench 11, uh, the performance between the Core M5Y70 and the Core i5-4200U are pretty close. There's a couple of cases where the 5Y70 is faster. There's a couple of cases where it's a little bit slower, but overall it's, it's pretty close. When we get into multi-threaded performance, um, the 5Y70 is actually a slower part. If you look at the multi-threaded result from Cinebench 11, for example, uh, the score it brings in is about 20% lower than the Core i5-4200U. Uh, if you look at uh, video transcoding, multimedia transcoding, you're looking at, again, 19 to 28% slower on the new Core M processor compared to the older Haswell uh, ULT processor. Um, that's a fairly significant performance delta there, but keep in mind, like the, the Broadwell Y parts aren't meant to be benchmark winners. They're meant to provide good performance uh, for a user experience browsing the web and doing other tasks. There are some advantages to core, uh, the Core M parts. For example, AES encryption uh, is improved on Broadwell, so it's actually faster by 10 or 15% than the Haswell part. Uh, but again, you know, transcoding, multimedia, that type of stuff, it's definitely going to be slower on the Core uh, M5Y70. 
Uh, in terms of the GPU, this has the HD 5300. Uh, the Yoga 2 Pro has the HD 4400, I believe. Now, the difference between that is uh, this has 20 execution units, and the new Core M part has 24 execution units, but it has a wider range of frequencies. I think this goes from 100 to 900 megahertz scaling capability, and the Yoga 2 Pro was 200 to 800 megahertz. So in theory, you would think the peak performance might be better on this, um, but minimum performance will be lower as well. Uh, in our 3D Mark testing, we tested both Ice Storm and CloudGate results, and this system's graphics scores were 23% and 16% slower than the Yoga 2 Pro. So that all sounds pretty negative, right? The Core M 5Y70, Intel's newest part, is slower than their older Haswell Core i5-4200U. But here's where the difference comes in, is in the power consumption. The TDP of the processor in the Yoga 2 Pro is about 14 watts. The TDP of the Core M processor is 4.5 watts. And uh, we have some pictures that we'll show you that look at the insides, you know, the, the PCB layout of the Yoga 3 versus the Yoga 2. Uh, the processor is much smaller, the packaging is much smaller, there's much less uh, required electronics to get a functional machine out of the Yoga 3 Pro. And uh, the reason they could do that is the 5Y70 based on measured power consumption. And when we do measured power consumption, we're basically looking at uh, our battery test over a certain length of time, and we kind of do the math there based on the size of the battery, and we can give you total power consumption for the system. The Yoga 2 Pro is over 11 watts, and the uh, Yoga 3 was just over 8 watts. So 3 watt difference there doesn't sound dramatic, but it actually equates to a much more efficient overall platform. The result is longer battery life for the Yoga 3 Pro than the Yoga 2 Pro, but it does so while being, I think, 16% thinner and like 18% lighter. It actually has a 44 watt hour battery versus a 54 watt hour battery. So the, the, the Core M powered Lenovo machine provides a, uh, I would say, slower overall experience, slower overall performance than the Yoga 2 but it does so while being much more efficient and it allows system builders like Lenovo and Dell and others to create systems that are thinner, lighter, and more compact. And again, this is only the first generation of Core M devices. Um, would I, you know, this is, again, we're, we're gonna do a different review of the Yoga 3 Pro itself specifically, but uh, I think what it's important to note is that the Core M 5Y70 part is meant to sit between the higher performance, you know, upcoming Broadwell parts and lower performance parts of like uh, uh, Bay Trail, right? So it is much, much, much closer to the performance of Haswell than Bay Trail, but it does so while being much more power efficient at the same time, which, you know, based on all of our previous talks with Intel in August and in September about this part was, again, their stated goal. There will be higher end Broadwell parts that will reach into the 15 watt TDP that will have form factors similar to this. They will have better performance, but they will have, you know, they'll be less efficient and uh, produce slightly lower end battery results. I find um, this, in particular, this system to be pretty compelling for me. Somebody who is mostly interested in web browsing and some, some basic application usage, not doing video editing, not doing heavy uh, photo editing on a machine, um, that allows it to be thinner, you're running full windows, it's lighter, it's more efficient. I would probably prefer to see larger battery, longer battery life, get something closer to 18 or 20 hours, but uh, we don't have that implementation yet. But what's important is that I think the Core M 5Y70 will enable that. If you go to PCPro.com today, we'll have a review with a ton of benchmarks of the 5Y70. We compare it to the Core i5-4200, the 4250. Uh, there's several, several other parts in there as well. Uh, and we look at CP performance, GP performance, web browsing performance, and things like that. So uh, we definitely have more benchmarks to kind of back up what we're saying here. I find the 5Y70 to be a very, very compelling part. It's not going to win any benchmark wars, uh, but I think we knew that or expected that going in. So uh, be sure to check out that review over at PCPer.com, guys, and let me know what you think. If you think uh, systems based on this processor will be something you're looking forward to either in the holiday or early in 2015. Thanks, guys.